Today we will be solving this problem called coin combinations one. So consider a money system consisting of n coins. Each coin has a positive integer value and our task is to calculate the number of distinct ways you can produce a money sum x using the available coins. For example, if the coins are 2, 3 and 5 and the desired sum is 9, then there are 8 ways to do so. And these are the ways. So the first line of our input will contain 2 integers n and x, n being as large as a hundred and x being as large as a million, and then follow n values ranging from 1 to a million. So let's go to the drawing board and try to come up with a solution. So this is our example. Let's go ahead and draw the tree representing all possible choices we can make at every state. So we will get something like this. We will start with n equals 9. And in the beginning, we can choose any of our coins here. So if we choose 2, we'll go to 7. If we choose 3, we'll go to 6. And if we choose 5, we'll go to 4. Then we will have three sub-problems that we will deal with in the similar fashion. So again here we have three choices for coins and so on. But notice like here we cannot choose coin 5 because 5 is larger than 4. And sometimes when we get to positions like this, here our value is 1 and there is no coin smaller than 1. So we'll have to stop. And we will repeat this process until we reach zero or we reach a state where we cannot make any further moves. And our answer will be just the number of zeros we find. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that's why the answer is eight. And if we take any path that goes from a leaf that is equal to zero to this root, then we will be retracing a sum. So here we get 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3, and that is indeed equals to 9. And these are the 8 sums we will get if we trace back each path. But as we saw with previous problems, we cannot implement a solution like this that will find the answer recursively because it will be too costly and because it is exponential in complexity. And as we saw before, we can notice here that many values are repeated. So notice how many times 4 is calculated over and over again. And the same goes for many other values. So as we saw before, we will use dynamic programming and memoization to speed up the process. And using a bottom-up approach, we will just calculate the number of ways we can form a sum starting from 0 and going up. And for each value, if we want to find the number of sums that would equal to 9, we will just sum up the number of ways to create a sum that is equal to 7, to 6, and to 4. And since the number of coins n is small, only up to 800, we can have two nested for loops. So for i less than or equal than x, and x is only up to a million. For j less than or equal than 100, we would increase the number of ways for i by ways of i minus coin j for total complexity of all of n times x, which is of order 10 to the 8th, and this is within our threshold. So let's go ahead and check out our code. So this is our program. We will start by reading n and x. Then we will declare a vector of int to store our, the value of our coins. We will read them. Then we will declare a vector of long long of size x plus 1 to count the number of combinations that would sum up to any value. And we will initialize that with 0. Then we will set the number of combinations for 0 to be equal to 1. And this, is, this would be the base case of our dp. Then we will have two nested loops. The first one will be representing the values and we will go from 1 to x included. And the second one will represent the coins we have. And if the value we are at minus the coin at position z is greater than or equal to 0, then we can add the number of ways of creating values minus coin j to this actual value. 
So it would update the number of ways for combination value with the number of ways with combination values minus cons j. And I do this uh, like this instead of using plus equal so that I can use the mod in the same line. And at the end, the value at position x will be representing our answer. So I just print that. So let's go ahead and submit. So that worked. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.